Now, staying with the tensions in the Gulf, let's cross live now to Simon Maben from Lancaster University. He's a lecturer there in international relations and the Middle East. Simon, thanks so much for joining us. As we said, there had been tensions um, before between these parties, but these events are sure. dramatic by, by any standard. What do you think has pushed this over the edge, so to speak? So I think there have been two different strands of tensions that have long been bubbling under the surface, predominantly since the events of 2011 in the Arab Spring, and, and divergent paths to dealing with the events afterwards. So I think the first one is with regard to, uh, to the Ghattari support for, for Islamist groups such as the Muslim Brotherhood in Egypt and across the region, and also groups like Hamas in, uh, in Gaza. So that's the first one. And the Saudis have obviously been very cautious about how to deal with these groups. And the Emiratis even more so, taking a much more hardline view on, on cracking down any type of support for this group. So, so Qatar providing support and encouragement to these groups and indeed hosting leaders in Doha is, is a source of a great deal of concern. And the second source is with regard to Iran and, and the type of comments that, that many in Doha have been making about thawing relations with Iran and actually improving things. And this is a, a real cause for concern for many in Riyadh, uh, many across the Emirates who are long concerned about what the Iranian goal in the Middle East is. And I guess with events last week, with the suggested hacking of, of, the, uh, of the website that covered Sheikh Tamim's comments, it was, it was an opportunity through which the Saudis and the Emiratis could actually deal with the Ghattaris and try and prevent this young upstart, so to speak, from gaining any more ground across the region. Uh, Simon, if you were an advisor to the Qataris here, how would you recommend they respond? Well, that's a, that's a really good question. And I guess it depends on the type of, uh, how confident they're feeling, the type of response that they want to go. They can continue going down this line of going it alone and, and trying to embolden actors across the region, continuing to support the Muslim Brotherhood, continuing to support Hamas and advocating more of an open rapprochement with Iran. But they could easily just back down. And, and I think that's probably the more likely scenario given that that the Saudis and Emiratis are, are seemingly operating with US support. But perhaps more importantly is that Qatar is, a, is pretty much a, uh, a country that's land border is, is now blockaded. And 40% of, of Qatari's food comes from that, that land border, comes across that land border. 90% of its imports overall come across that land border. And if you think that Qatar is supposed to be hosting the World Cup in 2022, and, and a great deal of the building work still has to be completed, there are some serious threats to uh, Qatar's future, its development politically, economically, and infrastructurally. So I think that, that probably in the longer term, we'll start to see a de-escalation of tensions. It's just a question of when and how far people in Doha want to push it. And very little has actually been said about that so far, because essentially this poses yeah. the the geographic isolation of Qatar, which is not under sure. sanctions, but once that border is closed, uh, Qatar has nowhere to go. Exactly, it's restricted to, uh, to, to getting out into the Persian Gulf, this, this narrow body of water. And really then, it, its only options are to deal with, with Iran or perhaps Oman, with, with whom it doesn't have the most favorable relationship. So its options are hugely restricted if the Saudis do decide to close this border, which, which I believe they will, if they will threaten to do, and then probably do so if, if the Qataris don't concede to them. So I think that there are worrying times ahead for, for Qatar because of how important this land border is. If the Saudis close it, then they're going to have serious problems importing food, importing basic goods, and, and continuing to build for the future. Okay, Simon Maben, unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there. Thanks so much for joining us from Lancaster.